Hey YouTube, happy Thursday, happy Halloween from the northwestern suburbs of the Washington DC metro area, not far from Shady Grove Station. I'll have to talk about that sign in another video. And on this spooky October Thursday, I'd like to share something with you that I don't think is really spooky. It's actually really intriguing, fascinating, satisfying, and dare I say, tasty. In this video, I'd like to tell you about a way you can establish stable internet connections through your living unit, through your dwelling. That method is called uh, Powerline Ethernet. You can plug in different Powerline Ethernet adapters like this, Comtrend, Oh, well, I need to see that, that label. This Comtrend PG9172PT, which I got in a pack of five for $45 on eBay, into different outlets throughout your house, your single family house, your townhouse, your apartment, your condo, and transmit Ethernet over the power lines. I'll be honest, I don't know the electrical engineering and the physics behind how this works, but somehow you can transmit even gigabit level ethernet through the power lines within your dwelling. That is really, really exciting, and it's important for someone like me because I host a radio show and I also have a web server just to the right of the field of view here that hosts the website with the archives of my radio show. That's the Copacetic Music Hour that's been featured on prior videos on my channel. You might want to check those out. You might enjoy them. Why then would I need really stable internet connections? When you're streaming, you don't want to have, have the stream breaking up midstream. That really damages the listening experience. And also, I, I need to establish a stable connection between my web server on the right and the rest of the world so people can, wherever they are, Mexico, Sri Lanka, China, Guatemala, Canada, who wants to download those archives can easily get to them and enjoy them on their phone, their, on their mobile device, on their computer, whatever. These, thankfully, are really, really simple to set up. I have uh, one in my room here, another one in another room where the router is. And all you have to do is plug in an ethernet cord to the bottom connect that to the router. That's the first one you should set up, not this one that's going to a, a Ethernet switch plugged into the um, server. You, you need to put the source one in first. And in my case, when I got these, they had been pre-configured with encryption, which is super important. Just a side note, if you live in a condo or an apartment, I think if the circuits are shared between units, people could potentially hack your connection, which is really bad. This can be encrypted, so that's great. But anyway, I'm I'm in you know a single a single dwelling, and I don't have to uh, worry about other people hacking hacking the internet connection. So I've left this this unencrypted. But when I was having trouble getting these to pair, so I pressed a uh, reset button on the side here, just below the encrypt button. There's this white encrypt button that comes out from the side of the adapter. Let me zoom in and you should be able to see that little cute little nub. Um, well, it's not focusing too well. Let me see if I move my hand closer, if that trick will help. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, that's uh, looking a bit better. Oh, man, I apologize for this poor focusing quality. Yeah, maybe it has something to do with my my hand there. Com trend. Yeah, it should say 9172 PT. And then you can see the little whiten up here. So that's the encrypt button, but just below this there is a recessed, recessed reset button. Recessed reset buttons by the seashore. And you can take something like a paper clip or a little precision screwdriver and press that reset your adapters and then just start with the source adapter and then plug in the I guess I'll call them sync or destination adapters in else elsewhere in your apartment um, you know other rooms of a townhouse or condo or single-family house what have you 
And then you have really nice stable internet connections to supplement Wi-Fi. These adapters I got are rated for 1200 megabips. I have 300 megabips home internet and I'm getting 100 megabips on the web server which is fantastic for my application. I I think you can do pretty well even with with older Powerline Ethernet adapters like this Zixel one that I got a, in a set of three for I think it was 20 bucks some, some time ago. This is either rated for 300 megabips or 600 megabips, but this gave a pretty good performance. I think I was getting 50 mega, megabips on the web server. And honestly, I hadn't heard of th these things until I saw a pair in Unique Thrift in Whedon. I think I, I don't think they were new in box. I think they had been uh, shrink wrapped in the in the uh, thrift store. They're, uh, I'll, I'll get those out. You know, I have them just to the left. But uh, but punchline is, I got those for six bucks for a pair, and they worked amazingly well. Uh, and that was really what inspired me to continue with Powerline Ethernet adapters. Let me just step over here and show you those. The Powerline AV Ethernet Adapter Kit. I can zoom out there. You can see what it looks like. These are up to 200 megabips. They're pretty old, which is why they're in the thrift store and really cheap. But they were recommended for multimedia connections. You can see how those are set up there. And it was really this $6 set that I got while I was starting the Copacetic Music Hour that got me into this kind of Ethernet connection. But anyway, I, I think that really summarizes everything. I just want to make you aware, if you aren't already, these are a really neat how dwelling space hack, internet hack, I guess. And they've been instrumental in really making my show have, have, good, have a good listener experience. So with that, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this, about, this, about using Powerline Ethernet adapters, leave them in the comments down below. And please like and subscribe as always. Have a good one.